<laughs> Seven signs she could be your dream partner. If you're a man and you're looking for a meaningful, serious, long-term relationship, not just a bunch of random hookups, you have to know what you're looking for in a woman. Because how on earth are you supposed to hit a target at a shooting range if you're blindfolded, if you can't even see the target? Bless Brown says people don't fail in life because they aim too high and miss, but because they aim too low and hit. You're not even aiming high enough. You don't even have a standard that you want to move towards regarding your dating and your relationship life. So today I have seven green flags for you that you want to look for. The first one, and one of the most important ones, high self-esteem. Now what does that mean? Jordan Peterson basically says that person likes herself. Do they like themselves? I may be butchering it, I think he said it, maybe somebody else says it, at least that's my interpretation of it. How good does she feel about herself? And there's a variety of different things that contribute to that, obviously that changes on a daily basis, but we all have an emotional home. And some women, as well as men, have an emotional home that's not necessarily conducive to a happy and harmonious living environment. And there's some women, like the lady behind that camera right there, who have that serotonin button, that dopamine button, pressed the whole time a little bit more than other people, whose emotional home is just happy, peaceful, and content. They have very well-functioning brains. And let me tell you something. You want to find a woman, the opposite of this would be scoring low in eroticism. High self-esteem, scoring low in eroticism. Now, that's not to say that everybody scores high in eroticism. I think I score actually naturally quite high in eroticism. That's why I have to have certain habits like gym and meditation and sauna and ice baths and that whole personal development should be able to balance that out. Now, when I do that, I'm absolutely fine. My energy levels are higher, my mood is better than most people's, but I have to do certain things to take care of that. Fernanda, she just exists and she's happy. You know, so it's not to say that just because somebody's a little bit neurotic, you can't be in a relationship with them. But let me tell you something. If you want to be happy, you want to be with a woman whose emotional home is happy and harmonious, whose default state is that she likes herself. Because if she doesn't, if she doesn't like herself, if she has that many insecurities, and we all have some, I just mean an extraordinary amount, if she's so insecure within herself, that's gonna manifest in controlling behaviors. My ex-wife, she's a good person at heart. She really is. She's not a bad person at all, but I believe she's insecure, or she was, she still exists, she still exists obviously, but she was insecure within herself when we were married, when we were in a relationship. And it would manifest in behaviors such as we'd go for a walk, and I'm not gonna talk bad about her as a person, She's a very good and kind person at heart, 100%. But we'd go for walks, for example, on a beautiful, sunny Sunday in Ireland, and we don't have that many of them. And she'd tell me, David, you should put on sun protection. I'm like, yeah, I know I'm ginger and white. I burn easily, but I haven't seen the sun in two to three weeks. Let me get to 20, 30 minutes. I know then I start burning, then I should put it on. I want a little bit of that testosterone and dopamine and serotonin boost that comes from exposing your skin to the sun. And she says, no, you should put it on right now. Skin cancer is very serious. Da, 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 da. So, okay, cool, fine. But there's also chemicals and sun protection. So it's, you know, Andrew Huberman talks about it. It's, it's a bit of a debate. And what ended up happening was she got so upset that I didn't put the sun protection on my own body that she walked ahead of me, upset and angry at me for not putting sun protection on my own body that I didn't listen to her advice and she ignored me for three hours. That's a little bit difficult, you know? So people who have a high level of self-esteem, they won't feel offended if you don't take their advice because they're happy with themselves. But if you're unhappy with yourself, you're gonna start projecting all kinds of insecurities on other people and it's gonna manifest in a whole myriad of different, in a myriad of different ways. Number two, green flag number two. So high self-esteem is number one. Number two is she's secure within herself and she can take a joke and she doesn't easily get offended. In other words, let me see what point three is. She is, point two is she assumes positive intent. In essence, very important. The people that you want to be with, their base assumption when they're talking to you is positive intent. They have to know that if they're not sure how you meant something, they generally assume positive intent. Obviously, they can clarify. That doesn't mean that she shouldn't be setting any boundaries with you in case 
you say something that isn't appropriate, absolutely she should be setting boundaries herself, of course. She should expect respectful behavior. That being said, there's a lot of people in this world, a lot of women and men, who by default assume negative uh, intent. Are you calling me fat? Call me ugly? You don't like me? Ba 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 ba. Whatever you say, if you make a joke, she assumes, huh, you meant it in a hurtful way. No, jokes are jokes. Now, obviously, it really depends on the place it's coming from. Some people make jokes and they really actually want to hurt you, be that in a professional business environment or in a relationship. Women do that to men, men do that to women. In that case, you absolutely have to set a boundary and you say up until this point and no further. But if you're talking to somebody who you know that wants the best for you, why would I not assume that that person wants the best for me? Why would I assume negative intent? Hugely important. Even just these ones so far, even just these two, if you, lo if you just look for those as universal qualification criteria and you refuse to settle for anything less, your relationship life is going to be a million times better than what if otherwise would have been, otherwise would have been. Number three, she's open to learning and discovering new things. A degree of open-mindedness, trade openness. Now, it doesn't have to be extremely, but if you're a man with a successful career, your own business, and you want to fly, you want to travel, you want to be able to show her new things, introduce her to your world because you are able to provide those types of experiences, she has to be open to trying those things. If she just wants to sit at home all the time, she doesn't want to go rock climbing, she doesn't want to do yoga, she doesn't want to go to the gym with you, she doesn't want to explore new places, maybe you have to travel for work quite a bit or for business meetings, whatever the case may be. Well then, or you just want to travel for fun because you can and she'd rather stay at home, that's going to make that very difficult. That's not so much, well, that's a debatable one, whether that's a universal one. If you're somebody who likes to spend most of his time at home, well, obviously that doesn't matter as much. But I'm just offering this one to you so you can think about it and see whether you want to take this particular qualification criterion, criterion, criteria, criterion, whatever the singular <laughs> version of it is, into your own list of uh, important characteristics you're looking for in a woman or not. Number four, open and kind communication instead of trying to make you feel guilty. A lot of women and men, they're trying to get influence through guilt. For example, you ask her for a favor or she asks you for a favor and for whatever reason you don't want to do her that favor or you can't do her that particular favor. And then she just looks down and says, Okay, no worries. Or, hmm, you don't care about me anyway. Or you want to go out with your male friends. Or you're going to go somewhere for work. And she says, well, I guess I'm just going to sit at home here all by myself. And she plays the victim card. That is not open and kind communication. In fact, Marshall Rosenberg would say, that's violent communication. And you don't want a person who uses such instrumental language. Now, obviously, language is always instrumental, instrumental in a negative way. If people use guilt, stay very, very far away from them. Because there's other ways to get people to do what you want them to do in an open and kind and honest and a very transparent way, as opposed to provoking guilt inside of them and then them giving in. And it's not going to work for you anyway in the long term, because in the long term, they're going to resent you for it. Trust me. Next one. No controlling behavior, a green flag. She respects her man's boundaries, very important. Some women are gonna react absolutely negatively to you setting boundaries. For example, she expects you to send her a good morning and a good evening text. If you like that, no problem, amazing. If you're somebody like me who considers texting to be a waste of time, I'm one of the world's best texters. Maybe one of the, maybe the best person in the world when it comes to texting because I help my clients from almost 30 countries over the years with, because texting is such a fundamental part when it comes to either meeting women on dating apps, on real life, and then moving it to a date. It's absolutely important in the initial stages, and you need a framework. If you want to learn that, apply for a free initial consultation call. It's, it's taught in detail in my coaching program. I'll help you with that personally. But beyond that, when you're actually in a relationship, Fran and I, we barely text, my texting is extraordinarily short. I send voice messages or I call her. Every now and then, there's obviously a time and a place for texting. Every now and then, that obviously really matters. 
but I consider it to be a huge waste of time. Like I saw somebody in the sauna yesterday. My building has a sauna. So I go down, I do my workout, I'm sitting in the sauna, I see this dude, and he's obviously texting with a lady and he's very animated. And I can see, I was sitting behind him, I wasn't paying attention too much to it, but I just looked over once or twice. And if there's a big glaring screen, the brightness is way too high, he's fucking with his melatonin levels, poor guy doesn't even know that, then obviously I'm gonna look over and I can see he's typing very animatedly, using way too many emojis. Stop using that many emojis. <laughs> and he's evidently making an effort. She responds and he responds immediately, bah, bah, back and forth. And that's not to say that if you're having an ongoing conversation that you can't, but why the hell? is he bringing his phone into the sauna. You're supposed to meditate in the sauna. You're supposed to be present. You're supposed to give your brain time to rest and digest. You're not supposed to be on your phone. If you feel the need to have to respond to her that much that you have to bring your phone into the sauna, a place that's supposed to be regenerative for your cognitive as well as physical abilities, well, then you haven't learned communication. I know 100% for a fact that his relationship is doomed to fail the way he's texting. He, because nobody is that needy. Nobody who actually has got his shit down, nobody who actually knows how to talk to women in an effective way is that needy when it comes to texting that he brings his phone into the sauna and responds immediately. And again, obviously you can have an ongoing conversation sometimes, but just send voice messages. Just have a phone call and I get it. There are some people who prefer texting back and forth. And that's fine. So it's not so much the thing, but the place it's coming from. If you're somebody who, and I have one, a couple of friends who are really, really good with women and they just really like texting, that's fine. If you really like it, but ask yourself, do I actually like it or, I do, it, or do I do it to please her? Big difference. Do I text? Once you're in a relationship, in the beginning stages in dating, you have to have a texting framework. Otherwise, you're going to keep missing out on dates and you're going to keep making mistakes, which is going to lead to them losing interest in you. But in the relationship, do you actually enjoy texting or do you do it because you don't want to lose her and you think it's expected? Big, big, big difference. So if she respects her boundaries, Fernanda and I, I established that with her very quickly, that I wouldn't be somebody to text that much. And that wasn't a problem at all because when I'm with her, I'm fully present. It's just, I'm not going to waste my time being on the phone all the time. If I'm with my male friends, if I'm working, if I'm in the gym, I try to not look at the phone too much. I'm on the phone a significant proportion on, during the day because I have a lot of clients who need help. So you know, I want to respond to them as fast as I can, obviously, to help them move things forward in a variety of different ways, mindset and all that. So I spend a significant proportion of my day on the phone. But when I'm present, I want to be present. And I don't want to have anybody's expectations on me that I'm going to reply within a certain period of time. Obviously, there's certain... SLA, service level agreements, if you will, that Fernanda and I have with each other. Obviously, I'm gonna, one of the, the first person I'm always gonna respond to is her, or my mother texts me in Germany, but that's a different story, right? But with other people, with clients, with friends, there's a certain expectation within which period of time I'm gonna respond. And I usually do, but don't have the expectation that I'm gonna respond straight away. These are boundaries you have to set. You have to protect your time at all costs. Number six, she takes care of herself physically. Now, obviously, you probably don't want a supermodel, but you want somebody who's attractive and who takes care of herself physically. Trust me, it's a pain in the ass if you have to motivate her to go to the gym. She should be inherently motivated. Fernanda went to the gym, what, five days a week before you ever met me? That was kind of your routine? Five days-ish? Yeah, I don't have to motivate her to go. She goes by herself to take care of herself first. She doesn't do it for me. Yes, in a sense, obviously, but primarily for herself. And then when I say, let's go to the gym, it's not me forcing her to go to the gym. It's something that's already been a part of her life all along. So we just sync up the times we go do it together. And then I sometimes have to push her a little bit to go to the sauna with me because it gets a little bit hard because she doesn't need the sauna for her happiness, whereas I greatly bet she's like, no, I really don't need it. <laughs> but I need it quite a bit. It makes me feel fantastic. You should go to the sauna three to four times a week. Try it out. It's fantastic for your well-being. It's going to improve your sleep. It's going to boost growth hormone. Hormone. It has so many benefits. Go. So yeah, I sometimes motivate. Do I have to go to the sauna? It's like, no, you don't have to, but we could. Also, to be honest, when we're in the sauna and she's sitting there in her bikini and I look at her, I'm just like, mm, mm. fucking great. It's awesome. And 
yeah, so I don't have to motivate her to go to the gym, but sometimes I give her a little push to go to the sauna. If you're looking for somebody that you can spend a long, long, long time with, you want her to take care of herself physically. That's just pretty universal, I think. Number seven, trustworthy and trusting. Trustworthy, you want somebody who's loyal. You don't want a woman who is gonna go around sucking dick left, right, and center. You don't want somebody who's gonna be posting Instagram stories of herself with other men. That's just utterly disrespectful. Obviously, if it's in a work context, if it's a massive group picture with 20 people, there's nuances. I get that, trust me. But you want somebody that you can trust absolutely. Now, is there always a, is there a 100% guarantee that she'll never cheat? No, there's no 100% guarantees. But there's women where if you learn to qualify properly, you understand the dynamics, you learn to communicate your personality authentically and effectively, these women are so unlikely to ever cheat on you that you can really trust them almost, not 100%, but 99%. And the deeper knowing beyond that is, if anybody should ever do anything, I'm gonna be okay because I've gone through a process beforehand of creating high quality options for myself, which I can do again and again and again. Obviously, to find somebody of high caliber, it's gonna take three to six months or something one or two months, seven or eight months, depending on your individual situation and your individual levels of effort, obviously. But if you want somebody who you can trust, I have zero doubts that I can trust Fernanda. But there's so many men out there who are so worried and jealous. And I get a lot of messages on Instagram of guys, probably every day, at least every week I get messages on Instagram from guys telling me about situations where girls cheated, men asking me, whether their level of jealousy is justified or not. And oftentimes it is, because the way she's acting around other men, that evokes a natural degree of jealousy. Are you supposed to be 0% jealous? Absolutely not. But unreasonable jealousy is what creates a problem. So obviously there's a spectrum and you're gonna draw a line artificially somewhere and there's personal preferences. Male best friends, for example, are you okay with that? Up to you. If she has a lot of male best friends that she hangs out with on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I would consider that a huge red flag. And maybe we're gonna add that as an eighth point, which is no male friends. And she can hang out with male friends within the context of a larger social circle and group meetings, no problem. But why on earth would she have to do that? Now, I am the last person to wanna tell women what to do. If women wanna have male friends, amazing. Do that, great. But then find a man who's okay with that. Me for my part? No. I really don't want to dictate how people want to, should live their lives or not, but I do consider it to be problematic because most men who pretend to want to be friends with women actually want to fuck them. It's just that they're not honest about their intentions. They think if I just linger in the friend zone long enough, eventually, There'll come a moment where she'll give in and then you can strike like a snake and escape the friend zone. No, it doesn't work like that. You'll get disappointed and she'll feel disrespected because she actually thought you just wanted to be her friend. So instead of that, just communicate your intentions honestly from the get-go. The second part of point seven was trusting. You also don't want her to be too jealous. If she's super jealous of you all the time, for no reason that indicates a lack of self-esteem, a lack of certainty, self-confidence, and that's gonna make life with her a living hell. Do you want her to be 0% jealous? Not at all. A healthy degree of jealousy from her side is quite normal. It's something that you want, because trust me, if she's not jealous of you at all, at all, well, most likely, there's a reason for that, because she's getting her needs met somewhere else. So you want her to be a little bit jealous, not a lot, but if she doesn't care at all, that means she's not that invested in you, my friend, but she should absolutely trust you. If you've never done anything wrong, then there shouldn't be any unreasonable jealousy. So these are the seven green flags. Trust me, again, as I said before, people don't fail in life because they aim too high and miss. They aim too low and hit and they settle for a mediocre relationship. You should write a list of what your dream partner 
would look like. And then you got to aim for that. And then you got to develop the skill set to attract and keep those types of women. If you want my help with that, simply apply for a free initial consultation call. Trust me, this journey is absolutely amazing. You can have a fantastic time creating options, going through a short-term dating process, and then finding somebody that you can be with. Because if you're with somebody who's really amazing, you're never gonna get perfect. You're never gonna get 10 out of 10 or 30 out of 30, depending which scale you wanna use. But you can get pretty close to that. And if you're with somebody like that, most days, nine out of 10 days, are gonna be so joyful. You're gonna wake up, you're gonna go for morning walks, you're gonna eat scrambled eggs together, you're gonna get your coffee together. In between work meetings, she's gonna cuddle you, give you a kiss. You're gonna have amazing intimacy, exciting, passionate intimacy. You can raise kids together. You have a long-term vision, a long-term plan because your core values are aligned and it just feels good.